Okay, good afternoon. Sergeant Bob Cristano, Curling Working in CIU. It's my partner, Detective J.K. Hudgens. And we're here to provide round two on terrorism prints and indicators. We were here about four months ago for the other two watches, and this is a, a normal update that we do, so we're going to talk about this subject today. <clears throat> we're here not necessarily because there's a spike in activity, but because it's imperative that we stay up to speed on this particular subject matter. Terrorism prints and indicators are a little bit different than what you're used to dealing with. It's somewhat of a paradigm shift. For years, you've been dealing with normal criminal activity, violations that are found in the penal code, municipal code, and the vehicle code. What we're going to talk about today are things that are highly suspicious, yet non-criminal predicates. But when viewed collectively, they could possibly add up to terrorism pre-incident, uh, terrorism pre-activity, uh, pre-operational activities. You have a sheet in front of you. Listed on the sheet, there are eight categories of terrorism preemptive and indicators, and we'll review them very briefly. First, you have human behavioral indicators. These you're already good at. This is typical of what you see on normal criminals. The second category is equipment indicators. The third category you have is document indicators. The fourth is surveillance reconnaissance indicators, followed by improvised explosive device indicators. Vehicle or vehicle borne improvised explosive device indicators, terrorist funding indicators, and the last one, criminal activity indicators. For this, for the purposes of this training, we're going to focus on three. We're going to focus on human behavioral indicators, equipment indicators, and surveillance reconnaissance indicators. If you continue to look at the form, you will see three columns. The first column you will see is human behavioral indicators. In the second column, you will see equipment indicators. And in the third column, you will see surveillance reconnaissance indicators. Here's the instructions for the activity. We are going to view a video scenario based on a true incident. This is a traffic stop, something we feel comfortable with, something we do every day of the week. What I want you to do as you watch the video, proactively make a list of all the human behavioral indicators you see during this traffic stop. In the second column, please list all of the equipment indicators you see during the stop. And in the last column, list all of the surveillance reconnaissance indicators you see during the traffic stop. Okay? Any questions so far? At the conclusion of the video, please turn over to page two. At the conclusion of the video, we want you to evaluate the officer's performance in four prescribed categories. The categories are one, PII recognition. Or in other words, did the officer recognize all of the indicators that he should have during the traffic stop? The second one, investigative questioning. Did the officers ask the right questions? Could they have gone further? How were their interview techniques? The third one, legal issues. Could it have gone to an arrest? Could it have gone to a longer detention? How do you feel about the legal decision that they made? And lastly, field resources. Did the officer use all of the resources they had at their disposal for the successful disposition of this traffic stop? Okay. Any questions? And again, as you view this, keep in mind the paradigm shift. You're not going to see many things that are criminal in nature. You're going to see things that are highly suspicious, potentially linked to terrorism, pre-operational activities. This uh, video, by the way, is based on real life experience, guys. The fact that it happened. 210 Alpha, I'm going to be on traffic 200 Sandpiper on 5 Henry Ida Lincoln 477. 210 Alpha, copy. Go ahead and start me in the other unit. I got a guy passing something back and forth. Sketch for the put on this thing. What do you got, Joe? Just stop these guys for a stop sign violation and the uh, driver and passenger look like they're passing something uh, back and forth or over to the uh, passenger side. Some metal object, couldn't tell if it was a weapon or a gun, what it okay. was. Я буду говорить, хорошо? Uh -huh. Не нервничай. Good afternoon. Все будет нормально. River City Police. Hi there, stop you for a stop sign violation. Um, saw you and the uh, passenger passing something back and forth. You mind stepping out of the car so I can talk to you back here, please? Okay. 
the camera on the floor, Joe. Okay, thank you. You step on back here to the curb for me. Okay. You don't have any guns or knives Keep or anything on you? No. Right there. Okay, great. I just want to pat okay. you down here real quick and make sure you don't have anything on you. I saw you and the passenger passing something back and forth. Just had me a little concerned. Can you spread your legs for me a little bit? Okay. You can just keep your hands where I can see them and undo your belt for me. I'm going to take you out of the car and pat you down real quick, okay? Okay. Come on out. Face away from me. Put your hands behind your back for me. There you go. Nothing on you that's going to cut me or poke me? No. Okay. Right next to your partner there. There you go. I'm going to talk to the driver real quick. Okay. Sir, you mind stepping up and talk to me over here real quick, please? Okay. This is my patrol car. Great. As I mentioned, the reason I stopped you is for a stop sign violation. Do you have a license I can see, please? Yes, in the back pocket. Great. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I became a little concerned because when I was walking up on the car, I saw you and the uh, passenger here passing something back and forth. I couldn't tell what that was. What did you guys have? Uh, it's a video camera. A video camera? Yes. What were you guys, uh, why'd you pass it so quickly like that? Oh, it fell into my lap. I wanted to put it down. Okay. What are you guys taking pictures of? Just beautiful city. Okay. Where are you from? Uh, from Russia. Okay. What brings you here to River City? Uh, tourists. Okay. Where are you guys staying? I'm uh, staying at the River City Inn. Okay, how long you guys plan on being here in River City? A couple of weeks, Okay. maybe two. All right. Sir, could you do me a favor? Can I talk to you, please? How long do you plan on staying? Uh, one week. One week? Okay. Um, I was talking to your brother and he's gonna let me look through the car. You guys don't have anything illegal in there? No. No? Is that a rental car? Uh, yeah. Do you remember who you guys rented it through? Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. All right. Could you do me a favor and just go ahead and have a seat on the curb again, please? Thank you. Here's their info. You want to start running them up? I'm going to look through the car. All right. 210 Sam to see. 210 Sam. Uh, if clear, I've got two names that I want to run and a plate. Affirm. Go ahead. You mind if I look at the video in your camcorder? Uh, okay, sure. A couple things just don't add up. Just uh, looks a little unusual. He's got that map and some unusual video on the uh, camcorder, some video of the entrances and uh, security exits and things like that at the airport. There's a mirror, a little video cassette recorder. Their stories are pretty similar, but not exact. They don't, uh, just just seems a little fishy to me. It doesn't sound like uh, you guys have their, their story together, and I think they're up to something. Uh, uh, not exactly sure what's going on, but there's not enough there uh, to arrest anybody on. There's nothing criminal inside the car. Okay. You gonna cut them a sight? Yeah, I think what we'll do is I'll just go ahead and write them a ticket for the uh, stop sign violation. We got all their info and everything come back on the car and then? Yeah, they they came back clear. Okay, I'll go ahead and write them the ticket and we'll cut them loose and then uh, we'll get together and pass this info on. Okay. Okay, that's your copy there. All right, you're all set to leave. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Some of the things that uh, just kind of caught me by surprise in there. They had a little uh, utility type mirror that you would see in a toolbox and uh, a little uh, voice tape recorder. Right. Um, so again, some of the things that just kind of caught my attention because I remember in some recent training they said that those things might be some terrorism indicators. And then the big thing is when I finally got an opportunity to look at that uh, video that was in the uh, camcorder, they had uh, some really suspicious uh, videos of the airport, some entrances, exits, security sites, things like that that uh, just threw up red flags. Yeah, it doesn't sound down right. Why don't we go ahead and give our TLO a call and uh, we'll run it by him and see what he thinks. Good. I want to pass that information on to him yeah. too. Let me give him a call. Okay, if you haven't done so already, please complete page one. And again, list all of the indicators you see by category. Human behavioral indicators in, in column one, equipment indicators in column two, and surveillance reconnaissance indicators in column three. When you've completed that, please flip to page two and rate the officers in these four categories. Any questions on the activity?
when you rate the officer's performance on a one to four scale, and just descriptions of what the one should look like and what the four should look like, please also make a little comment because we'll debrief this as a large group and we'll get your input. Okay. Okay, flip back to page one. First thing we're going to do, human behavioral indicators. Let me hear some of the things you came up with, please. Anyone? One was in charge and one was passive. One was in charge. Which one was in charge? Driver. 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 And the passenger? Submissive. Passive. Submissive. What we set up here is typical of what's called a cell handler role, where the driver is the one who's supposed to communicate. The passenger is told to not communicate because he could potentially compromise the mission. And that's why he felt so uncomfortable communicating with the officer. What else did you see? Now, passing things back and forth, hiding things. When was it, there was a critical time when they were passing something back and forth, when was that? When the traffic stop was initiated. When the traffic stop was initiated, the initial furtive movement, and the officer keyed on that, right? Right. Safety consideration and also quite suspicious upon the traffic stop, they passed something back and forth. What else did you see? coaching of the uh, passenger by the driver. It was actually two times when he was coaching. When did you see that? When the first stop was made. When the stop was made? And when the passenger got up to go speak with the officer. Okay, now what was consistent about both of those coaching sessions? Foreign language. Foreign language. language. Foreign language. Excellent. Outstanding. And even though you don't speak Chechnya in this case, what was he telling him? In a nice way, he was saying probably shut up. <laughs> Talk to him, right? Shut up, I'll be in charge. Pretty obvious. Okay, even though we don't speak the language, we speak police language, and that's pretty <laughs> obvious what he was saying. Okay, very, very good. Two critical times as the officer's approaching, and then last minute coaching as they're separating what to say, what not to say. Very, very good. What else did you see? They're dressed the same. Dressed the same. What do you make of that? Nondescript. Nondescript. If they're doing a surveillance type activity, can they kind of interchange roles? Is that effective from an operational standpoint? Also, how did they look? Were they dressed out of the ordinary? Clean cut, perfectly ordinary. Business casual, fit in anywhere, under the radar, low profile, wouldn't raise your level of suspicion, right? Good, what else did you see? Their stories weren't consistent. What part of their stories were not consistent? How long they were staying. What did one guy say, how long is he staying? Two Couple weeks, two and weeks. And the other guy? One week. week. Does this ever happen to you? You travel with your friend or spouse, and you say, when are we leaving? One week or two? Okay, it's humorous, but you know what day you're leaving, what flight you're leaving. Okay, this is highly atypical for someone to be that inconsistent. But again, a good human behavioral indicator. They just have, don't have their stories quite together. What else did we see? The passenger didn't know who the rental agency was. Okay, another good one. He asked, where did you rent the car? I don't know. My sense is they'd have a difficulty returning the car if they didn't know where they rented it from, right? All right, so that's highly suspicious also. All right, we'll get in, in a moment, we'll get into what follow-up techniques could have been used. But very, very good. What else did you see? Anything else? It's Sites. A, go ahead. Go ahead. It's a minivan. It's a nondescript soccer mom minivan. Let's save that for category three, but that's a great observation. Very, very good. But we'll save it for surveillance reconnaissance. Put it on the back burner, Larry, and we'll get back to it. Mike, you had something? I was going to add uh, sightseeing in a, an industrial airport area. Exactly. Okay. What else on human behavior? Anything else? Did he ask him for a piece of ID? Mm -hmm. What did he produce? A piece of ID. A piece of ID, a driver's license. Where did he get it from? His back pocket. His back pocket. Males in the room, raise your hand if you carry your license loose in your back pocket. Anyone? Okay. What's the message there? He's prepared. He's prepared. I only He's prepared. Outstanding. He's prepared. He's prepared, and he might have something in his wallet that could potentially compromise the false ID which he handed the officer. So he's only going to hand him that one piece of ID which he has already practiced and memorized the information. Practice set of facts. All right? Doesn't want the officer to look in his wallet. So here's your idea. Satisfy that question. Very good. Anything else? I think the posture of the pasture, how he was kind of balled up on the, uh, the curb. What did you make of that? Is that typical of the people you stop on a traffic stop? Did they sit on the curb in a somewhat fetal position? No, very passive. On vacation. Very passive. There's a cultural issue that comes into play. These guys are not from Russia. They're from Chechnya. And there's a cultural issue, possibly, the way law enforcement maybe interacts with people there. 
Okay, because that wasn't a normal posture to take when you're dealing with law enforcement, as you know. Anything else? Good job, I think you almost have them all. Let's look at what we have on the answer sheet here. <clears throat> Passing the item of the passenger and the passenger hiding item, which was said. Talking with passenger as officers approaching. Both nervous throughout the contact. It was a little subtle, but did you notice the driver on two occasions wiping his palms, sweaty palms? Camera fell in my lap. How about that comment? How do you like that one? Did you see a moonroof where it could have fell from the sky? I, I must have missed that. All right. A good follow-up question. Where would it fall from, sir? Tourists. I and mean, do they look like tourists? Okay. Driver here for two weeks, passenger here for one, inconsistent stories, doesn't know where he rented the car. Driver talking uh, with passenger in Russian right before the interview. And another critical question on the officer's part, which he missed and he, when he debriefs the TLO, he says he didn't ask him where exactly he was from. A little bit of a difference. Chechnya is a more volatile area and more prone to terrorism. On equipment indicators, what did you see? Now let me preface it, there is going to be some overlap between it equipment and surveillance reconnaissance indicators. For that purpose, the ones that are specifically for surveillance reconnaissance, leave those for category three. What did you see as far as equipment? Anyone? Prepaid phone cards. Prepaid phone cards. Tell me the advantage of having those. Not traceable. Not traceable. There's a couple of techniques that we use where we can find out who's calling who, and that's very important to link people together. If you use a prepaid phone card, Basically, when we look at that, it's going to come up with a calling card number and nothing more. It doesn't help us a lot from an investigative standpoint, right? Good. What else? Rental car. Rental car itself. Why? It's also also to be untraceable. Good. Depending on how they rented it, if they rented it with a false ID, all right? Very good. What else? Quick. What else did we see? GPS device. GPS device. Is a GPS device a valuable piece of intelligence information? Yes. What yes. does it tell you? Exactly. exactly. Longitude and latitude. It would tell me where he has been and potentially where he's going if he's doing inquiries on different areas where he's intending to travel. Is that important from an intelligence standpoint? Yes. Can we link people's places and activities together through coordinates on a GPS device? Absolutely. What else? Voice recorder. Voice recorder. What's the advantage of that? Notes. Notes as you go. You don't have to stop and be suspicious by writing something down. Right? You can merely dictate, and then when you get to a fixed location, you can transcribe what you have on the recorder. Very effective. What else? Binos in the mirror. Binos in the mirror. It's a little bit in category three, but long range optics in general. Why? It's highly suspicious if someone is right up on a potential target doing an observation or surveillance. But if they go back a few blocks and they have the long range optics, binoculars, cameras with telephoto lenses, they can get a few blocks away and not raise that level of suspicion. What else? Cell phones. Cell phone. What about a cell phone? Is that a valuable piece of intelligence information? Yes. What can we glean from cell phone numbers? Phone numbers. Previous contacts. Other people. Are, are the people on the phone, both people he's calling and people that are calling him, and potentially numbers that are in the memory, from an intelligence standpoint, is that valuable? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Can we potentially make intelligence link charts from the information contained on a cell phone? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes, we can put people together. Right? And again, we have techniques where if we have those numbers, we can access who's interacting with who. Very important to draw linkages. That's how we tie people and events together. Very, very good. Other than the laptop, your most valuable piece of intelligence information on a stop like this is going to be your cell phone. Right? You can get a consent search or a Ford search. Obtain those numbers, your valuable information. It's an analyst's dream to have those cell phone numbers. You can do a myriad of things with them. What else did you see? It looked like either Yahoo or Google Maps. Maps. Maps on the seat. Very good. What else? Anything else? <coughs> Talk about the video camera. Video camera. Let's stay with the camcorder right now. In a moment, we'll get into something more significant about the camcorder. But yes, the video camera itself. Let's see how we did on this. Very good job. The camcorder, cell phone, the maps, the rental car itself, which was said, the calling cards, the voice tape recorder, and the clothing. Two threes. Blend in. Look the same. Interchange roles. Okay? That's an equipment indicator. Think of it as a prop. Surveillance reconnaissance. Let's start off with the camcorder. Let's take it to a different level. What about the camcorder is suspicious? Video of 
places are not normally tourists. The video footage on the camcorder, is that significant? Mm -hmm. Yes. Please distinguish between operational footage and footage that's obviously for pleasure viewing. If you take operational footage of the entrances and exits to the airport and how the doors open and close, that's not footage you take home the next weekend and show the kids on a Sunday afternoon. Look kids, there's the doors. It's not very enjoyable for the family. It's operational footage. We know when we go on vacation what kind of pictures we take. The family's usually included in the picture. It's a significant landmark, so on and so forth. All right? That's highly suspicious, that type of footage on the camcorder. What else? Tell me more about the van. Tinted, tinted, windows. Windows. tinted windows. Good surveillance vehicle. How long can you stay fixed in the back of that vehicle with tinted windows? Long time. Watching a location. Well, at least three days, right? Hmm. 72 hours. Okay. <laughs> Good. What else? What else about the van? I think that's what the cigarettes were for because you're there a while. Okay. Well. Could be. Okay. What about the van? You have two good looking Russian guys or Chechen guys here on vacation in America just to see your beautiful city. Yet they rent I mean, a Toyota Sienna minivan. Was that suspicious to you? With no car seats or anything else in the back? No like no car seats. No okay. Family. family. Okay. Let me tune you in. There's something you do that you might not realize you do. You're looking as you're patrolling for vehicles that are interesting to me, right? Vehicles that really kind of interest you. That's a good vehicle to potentially stop if there's a violation, of course. And across the intersection, you see this gray Toyota Sienna, Sienna minivan, okay? Visualization, without even seeing who's driving it. Tell me who's driving it. Soccer, Soccer mom. mom. Soccer mom coming home with her kids. Depends on what time. She could be coming home from school or going to soccer practice. And the only thing you really can't see from your vantage point is what? The bumper sticker to say where her kids go to school, right? I'm being facetious, but you know what I'm saying. You're far less likely to stop that vehicle because your profile on that vehicle is that's a soccer mom, not two Chechen terrorists, right? Okay, so good vehicle. Now you gotta think, two guys that are here, they rent a vehicle that probably costs three times the amount to rent than a regular car. And if they're here to enjoy, they probably want to convertible or something sporty, right? Anything else on surveillance reconnaissance? They were by the airport. They were by the airport. Good. Rural area. What else? Whatever the tape is on the on the on the cassette recorder to do like mental notes. What's on the tape? Definitely. Okay, because there's, there's visual reconnaissance and there could be audio reconnaissance. They could have recorded something significant about the airport. What else? Binoculars. Binoculars. Long range optics. Stay further back from the target. Anything else on surveillance reconnaissance you see? Anything else? Probably the maps where they're circling where they are. Or circles. Absolutely. There was actually, if you look closely, there were little circles on the map, so that's significant as well. Okay. Very good job on this. I think we nailed it. The video camera. More importantly, the footage on the video camera. The mirror. Significance of a mirror? What can you do with it? Look around See, corners. Look, behind you. look around corners, look under vehicles. Most importantly, probably look in this direction, yet be able to see fully what I want to see behind me. So if I want to look at the south wall of the courthouse, I could actually be looking into the park, look through a mirror, and see that south wall of the courthouse. And people wouldn't be suspicious about someone that's looking in the park, as opposed to someone that's looking at a wall of the courthouse. Okay? Also, they could use it to signal people from across the field. Right? right. Binoculars, GPS device, type of vehicle, ideal for surveillance. And driver, the footage, he says, your beautiful city is actually your beautiful airport, specifically the doors, entrances, and exits. Moving on to page two. Let's evaluate the officer's performance in those categories. First category, PII recognition. How did the officers do? Somebody rate them and please justify them. Anyone? Three. Why? He, seemed to, he, he knew he was seeing something, but he was unsure of what he was seeing. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody have anything different than three? Did they miss anything? What do you think? When he debriefed the sergeant, did he hit on everything that he saw? Did you see anything different that he missed? 
He didn't hit on a lot of the electronic equipment. He didn't hit on the baths. He didn't. All the stuff on the seat. All the stuff on the seat. Some of the things were missed. Maybe he saw them, but he didn't debrief them. Is it just as important to document everything you see? Or collect everything you see? Or debrief everything you see? That's vital. Yeah, if it's not on paper, it didn't happen. We don't know about it. So it's vital to document it accurately. Question. If he would have went further with his investigative <coughs> questioning, would he have come across more significant pre-incident indicators? Yes. yes. Good. I'm glad we agree so we can move to the next slide. Investigative questioning. How do you rate him and why? Two. 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 Why? Because he, he asked some good questions, but he didn't go into detail. He didn't dig a little deeper. Okay. Somebody else? I give him a three. Why do you give him a three? Because I figure most patrol officers aren't out there looking for that kind of stuff. Okay. Well said. Good. But I think it never hurts to ask questions. Absolutely. When, he, when he's got two different times. Two different stain. I mean, there's always follow-up questions that can be asked. Sure. Good point. Yes. I, I give him a two. I mean, he could have asked some real casual questions, like, "Is this your first trip to the United States?" And I like think you said, "Where are you from? Or, do you have a tourist? Are you on a tourist visa? You know, do, have you, do you work here? You know, anything, anything like that." Very good. Someone else. Well, their stories were so inconsistent. The stories fell apart pretty quick. That you know, a passport, a visa. You know, where have you been before this? Where else have they been traveling? That it would have built, built very quickly. Sure. Yeah, why does a tourist have a California driver's license? Good question. One has a Missouri driver's license, both false documents on both subjects, and one has a Russian passport, both yeah. false documents. Yeah. Who the name of the rental car is in, I mean, the, the documents would have fallen apart real quick if you would have tried to match any. That's a good point. That's a very good point. We talk about legal issues, we'll get on that, we'll get back on that. Alan? Even with the uh, with all the stuff they were getting, I think they had enough to call the TLO from the scene. Okay. Instead of waiting later. We'll address that shortly. Anything else? Any other comments on investigative questioning? Well, I think they were satisfied with one word answers. They were almost just asking the question, they get an answer, and they move on. How were his answers, the driver? They were reversed. What are you doing here? Tourists. Where are you staying? Uh, uh, River City Inn. First of all, what's the uh, uh, River City Inn? He's thinking. He's thinking. Is it any different than, what's your name, sir? Who, me? When there's really no one else within five miles. It's a method to think. I'm not sure what I'm going to tell this officer. Let me buy a little time. That's exactly what he's doing. With the, uh, uh. Is that how we respond? One word, or do we talk in sentences? These are rehearsed, practiced answers. He knows what he's going to say when he's stopped. Right? What's some of, tell me some of the good questions we could have asked this guy. Anyway. They're tourists and they're, they're hanging around the airport. Why? Why? Uh, Great. Why, why are you taking photos of the airport? Very good. Uh, what else? Where have you been? Where have you been? Where'd you just come from? What else? Where are you going? Where are you going? Are you going? What else? You have hotel paperwork. You have hotel paperwork. Let me tell you what you're doing now. You're describing the word vigilance. It's a term that's used quite often, and this is the description. It means go beyond what we normally do. Because we're fighting an enemy that's extremely skilled, practices long-term meticulous planning, they have a full training manual which guides their activities, therefore we have to be on top of them, we have to be on top of their game, and that's where vigilance comes in. What else can you have asked? Rental car paperwork. Rental car paperwork, okay. If he says, I don't know where I rented it, should that be the end? Of course not. How about, I'm staying in River City Inn, was, there any, was anybody very happy with that response? No. What room? Yeah, what room? Anyone? No. Okay. The hotel key, some kind of proof one way or another. Receipt. Tell me about the hotel. Good. Okay. What's the key question that he missed? One key, if I had to say one key question, what would it be? Where are you from? Even better than that. What do you do for living? Even better than that. How about this? Why do you have footage of the airport entrances and exits on your camcorder, sir? Is that a good question? Yeah. Okay, now listen, here's a key learning point. He's going to respond to a question like that by saying, well, I enjoy watching doors open and close. I like green doors. I've liked them as a kid. I want to be an architect. Lock them into that story. That's valuable. If they say it, lock them into that story. Okay? Guys, let me back up just for a second on that. Uh, uh, this whole scenario was set up. These guys had fake ID. Anytime I ask for ID, unless you're, st unless you're a girl and a pair of... of uh, tight jeans or a uh, dude in a pair of uh, old angel flights or something and I ask for your ID and you whip it out of it as a single document the hair on the back of my neck is crawling I want to see the rest of that ID 
okay? Uh, this case would have ended right here, right now, if you would have said, okay, that's a great driver's license, your tourist from Russia, let's see your passport, your travel documents, some second form of ID. You would have discovered right then, right there, fake driver's license. Lock them into that story. They lock them into it, because what's gonna happen at a later point in time, an investigator like JK is gonna sit down with this guy and you have a prior and consistent statement. Is that a valuable interrogative tool? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You sit down and you say, sir, back on November 1st, you said you just like green doors and the way they rise and close vertically. Today you're saying something different. Is that powerful? Yes, it is. Okay, very good. Legal issues. Let me sum this one up. Raise your hand if you felt very comfortable with these guys driving off into the sunset. Two terrorist operatives with a trove of intelligence information in their car. Anybody feel good about it? No. What could we have done different in this scenario? You could have dug deeper. Yeah. And went to the hotel. Okay. If you would have dug deeper, specifically with identification issues, who they really are, what would you have come up with? For arrest. If you have the driver's license, obviously it's not a California driver's license. It's going to be an international driver's license. That gives us more time to verify. Good. You would have came up. You would have come up with false identification, <laughs> and you have a 148, or you have false ID in various sections. The key learning point on this slide here is, in these cases, arrest for any violation, regardless of how minor, because when you do that, number one, you, you avoid the problem with a lengthy detention and the liability that could go with it. Secondly. From an intelligence standpoint, if you arrest them, do we get to impound all of that evidence? Yes. Yes. Is that important evidence? Yes. yes. Is that something an analyst would like to look at the next day and, and, and kind of analyze every single piece of phone number and the maps and the GPS coordinates? Absolutely. And you would only get that if you made a lawful arrest. Field resources. How'd the officer do? One, horribly. Why? Well, you should have called the TLO initially, had him come out, detain them, could have called the FBI, could have called crime analysis or inquiry and run the identification they had. He didn't do any of that. Merrill's 100% right. You have resources. Let me give you an example. JK works at the Joint Terrorism Task Force. The Joint Terrorism Task Force consists of multiple agencies. Some agencies are specialized in international travel documents, more skilled than we are in that area. Use the resources that we have, right? He used one field resource. What was it? Inquiry. Partner. He used his radio, a record check. I call that the classic seven-minute waste of time. Three and a half for you, three and a half for the dispatcher. You're running a false ID. You might as well not even do it. I equate this to your gang member who has all the gang paraphernalia, has all the gang tattoos. You run his ID, he comes back with no criminal history. What do you say? Have a nice day, sir. Of course you don't. This is the same thing. These are good cops, all right? but they didn't really catch on to what was going on. Additional follow-up questions on identification, they would have trapped them into a story and it would have resulted in an arrest. Any questions? If you make this stop out there, what's a good field resource for you to use? <coughs> now let me give you a hint. If you look at your form, it's designed to be a funnel. <laughs> and it funnels down to three names on the bottom, all right? And the three names at the bottom are myself, JK, and Joe Larry. We oversee all the terrorism issues for the city, and if you get something that rises to this level, even short of this level, give us a call. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's the expectation throughout the department. We need a call, we need to be out there. My feeling is, over the years, too much valuable intelligence has driven off into the sunset similar to this. We can't have that happen again. We have to protect our country and it all starts with you. In my opinion, as the intelligence sergeant, you are the most valuable asset we have on the department. The patrol forces are the most valuable intelligence asset because you work daily, interact with the community, you have an intimate knowledge of the area you work, and you know when things are out of place. Better than we do. But we're only as good as the information we get from you. So in every case, you have to get the information. Fully document what you have. If it rises to this level, Call us, it doesn't matter what time of day. If we can deal with it on the phone, we will. If not, we will be out to your location to assist you. We have a ton of resources at our disposal, but do not let people like this drive off into the sunset. It's imperative for Homeland Security and for national security, and that's where we're at. Any questions? Okay, I wanna close with one quick story. 
these guys gave me the two minute a long time ago. I want to close with one quick story because you say this Homeland Security is a bigger picture than me. It's not really. It comes down to the individual officer and the way you perform your job on a day to day basis. Example, Ahmad Rassam is the Millennium Bomber. Most of you are familiar with him? December 14, 1999, Ahmad Rassam is planning to bring a suitcase bomb containing 118 pounds of fertilizer explosive, timing devices, and two jars of liquid similar to nitroglycerin to the Los Angeles International Airport that would have devastated the airport, probably one terminal would have taken it down and caused many casualties. Here's why it didn't happen. It wasn't some CIA operation. It wasn't some FBI, Pfizer, Title III wiretap. It was the actions of one officer and the way she did her job. On this particular day, Ahmad Rassam is coming off the Coho Ferry into, Brit into Port Angeles, Washington. And customs agent Diana Dean is working. Now listen carefully. It's a freezing cold night in Port Angeles, Washington. It's the end of her shift. It's the last boat of the night. Ahmad is the last car on the last boat of the night. And he comes to her at her checkpoint. Is it easy, with the conditions I just told you, to wave him through and go home? But she didn't. She keyed on his human behavioral indicators, which were very suspicious. And the more she delayed his entrance into the country, the more nervous he became. Finally, he ran. He was taken back into custody. The search of his trunk yielded 118 pounds of fertilizer explosive, timing devices, and liquid explosive as well. This was the last line of defense. There was no more. If he got by Diana Dean, he would have been in LAX. He had done dry runs. He had done tests of security. He was ready to go. Outstanding job by one officer protecting our country. It comes down to you and the way you, take, the way you do your business on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Any questions? If you have any questions in the future, our phone numbers are on the bottom. Please don't hesitate to call us. I appreciate your time. Thanks for your participation. I think you all did a great job. And if you have any questions after filming, stick around and we'll address those as well. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Okay, please get logged on as soon as you can. Thank you very much. Everyone did sign in. If you did not sign in, please, I'll leave the sheet. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it.